Welcome everyone. Welcome to the Round Rock ISD Parent Programs Online Family Connection Series. We're so happy you're here. We know it's not easy coming on an evening on a weekday, so we are so happy you're here. This evening, it's all about words, and we're going to be talking about building your child's vocabulary. This session is being recorded, so you can use it as a resource later. You can find it on our parent program website, and we'll send it to you in a follow-up email as well. So don't worry about having to take notes or anything like that. We would love to know who's with us tonight. So if you haven't already signed in, please do type your name and your child's school in the chat. And while you're doing that, I'll take this moment to introduce myself. I'm Jackie Syriac, and I will be one of your hosts tonight. I don't have a pre-K or kindergartner. It's been a while. My kids are in high school, but I do have a three-year-old nephew, you can say a rising pre-Ker, who I'm super eager to use some of these awesome strategies with. And I'm one of several parent liaisons on the Round Rock ISD parent team. And tonight I'll be joined by Kimberly, Kate, and Jyoti, who will introduce themselves now. And let's start with Kimberly, please. Great, thank you, Jackie. My name is Kimberly Peterson, and I'm also one of your Round Rock ISD parent liaisons. I have two children. They're both graduates of Round Rock ISD high schools and in college now. It is so wonderful to see all your familiar faces. I feel like I got to meet a lot of you kind of in person during the curbside bag pickup. So thank you for taking the time to do that. I'm so happy you've joined us this evening and look forward to sharing this session with you. Now to Kate. Thanks, Kimberly. Um, I'm Kate Gallinat. I'm one of your parent liaisons as well. And I'm just excited to be here tonight and share with you guys. I have three kids at home, a first grader, a fourth grader, and a sixth grader. So this is really relevant to my first grader, but really all of my kids, because these are strategies that you can use really at any age, elementary school, they, they, can, they can work for all the kids. So I'm excited you're all here tonight and I'm gonna pass it over to Jyoti. Thank you, Kate. Good evening, Round Rock ISD families. I'm so glad that you guys are all here today. So I'm Jyoti Apia. I'm also a parent liaison with the district. And similar to Kate, I've got three children. I've got a fourth grader and twin boys who are in first grade. So these strategies is something that we've used as a family and something we actually continue to use and build on even still. So I found them super helpful and I'm sure you will today too. So enjoy your evening. Thank you, ladies. You're only seeing four of us tonight, but there's an entire parent team at Round Rock ISD. We serve various campuses across the district by connecting families to the wonderful learning that's happening at school. Our goal at the end of the day is to partner with families like you for your child's success. And tonight we look forward to sharing and collaborating together, keyword together. This is going to be an interactive discussion tonight. So toward that end, let's try to listen with an open mind, use the chat feature, try to keep the chat to the topic, please. And speaking of chatting, it's pretty easy to interact with us. You're gonna click on the little box with the lines at the bottom of your screen, and you're gonna type away. That's the chat box, and that's what we're gonna use to interact. Sometimes it's hidden, like for me on my screen, I had to click more and then I would see the chat box. So you might have to experiment with it a little bit, but don't be shy about using the chat because throughout this session, we will be giving away prizes for answers that are typed directly into the chat. But before we get to that, let's look at a few of our goals for tonight's session. First, you're going to explore your literacy swag bag. It's this yellow bag that you probably received from Kimberly, but if you don't have it, no worries at all. You're still gonna gain useful tips from this session. Next, you're gonna learn several stat strategies to increase your child's vocabulary. And finally, we'll practice strategies together. That's probably my favorite part and what I'm looking forward to so that you can do these 
these strategies at home with your child. So let's get started by exploring that swag bag. And Kimberly, can you get us going with that, please? I would love to. All right, everybody. Now it's time to actually grab your swag bag that you have. And we're going to be playing kind of a scavenger hunt, get to know what's inside your bag game. Um, I'm going to be asking four different questions. It's all related to the great supplies and materials in your bag. Um, again, like Jackie said, if you don't have your bag next to you, that's okay. You're still going to learn a lot in this session. But for this first part, we just wanted to play a little interactive game with everybody. So let's get started. Our first, oh, and let me tell you the prizes because that's always important. So everybody wants a prize. If you're the first person to type the correct answer in the chat box, you're going to win a bundle of books that our wonderful Round Rock ISD kindergarten teachers, I reached out to them and they recommended some of their favorite books that they wanted to share with families. So that will be the prize of our four questions tonight. Okay, everybody, get ready to type away. Our first question is, how many items are in this bag? Go ahead and type your answer. Should be a number into the chat. Jackie, have you had any correct answers yet? I think it was Fatima with eight, but the chat is going so quickly. I have to tell you that this is the quickest group I have ever seen. Um, and we may have to review the chat at the end of the night, but I'm going to go with Fatima and someone keep me honest here if I got that wrong. All right, Fatima. I know Fatima. Hi, Ma, Fatima. Um, well, the correct answer was eight. Oh, there she is. Hello. Yes, there are eight <laughs> items in this bag that I think you all will enjoy. So just real quickly. The first is this card. This could be real easy to toss aside, but don't. Those songs that we were playing at the beginning as you were waiting to join us, how to download them is on this card. And they're great to play when you're in the car on a walk with your kids. They're just great songs. We have English and Spanish. You also have these crayons. These are great crayons for pre-K and kindergartners. They're those thick ones that fit perfectly in their hands. We have our safety scissors. Boy, are these important at this age. The good thing is these really only cut paper. They're not gonna cut brother or sister's hair. There are three books that we're gonna use in this next portion of our session. They're bilingual, they're in English and Spanish, and we think you will just love them. We also have a journal that we'll be using tonight in our session. And last but not least is our family guide. This has so much great information in it for you parents. And our next three questions are actually, you're gonna find the answers in this guide. So hang on to it tight. And we're gonna get ready for our second question. Okay, who can type in the chat? What does the light blue tab, it's the section, what does that focus on? the light blue tab in this family guide. Go ahead and type the answer in the chat. I've never focused so hard <laughs> on something. It's more than one word. So go ahead and type the whole thing in there. Yes, and I think Kelly looks like she put in physical development, health, safety, and fine arts. Bing, so bing, bing, we're gonna yes, that. yes, that's correct. Congratulations, Kelly. So as she typed in the chat, there are lots of great activities all around that topic. One thing particular that we wanted to point out to you up on the slide is you can use those safety scissors from the bag, cut out different, or you have your child, I mean, cut out different pieces of paper and you can make a design or a collage. Um, so that's just one way to use um, some of the materials in the bag and this again, this section has lots of great ideas. We just wanted to highlight one of them. Okay, now we're ready for question number three. Type in the chat, what does the dark blue section focus on in the family guide? Go ahead and type away. Try to get in that full. Try and get in all the words. <laughs> yes, and it looks like Ranjitha wrote in mathematics, science, and social studies. Oh, that's great, exactly. Congratulations, Ranchita. That's exactly what this section's gonna focus on. So one activity that's listed in the guide that we wanted to highlight um, are making patterns. That's such an important skill for our pre-K and kindergartners to do at this age is being able to recognize patterns. 
one way to do that is with colored Legos you may have at home. You can use buttons. You can use, I used to use crayons with my kids and I would put them in a pattern and have them copy the pattern next to it. Um, that's just a great skill to start practicing for them to do. So we wanted to just highlight that, but there's so many fun activities under this tab that you can do with your kiddos. Okay, and for our last question of the evening for the get to know your swag bag is go ahead and type in the chat, what does the green tab section focus on? What kind of activities? Go ahead and type away and type the whole thing in there, please. We already have a winner. And okay, that is they're Nick. quick, Jackie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they caught on quick and Nick and Nalani, I believe, was the Wonderful. first family to put in the correct answer for the group. Okay. Well, congratulations. Um, that section does focus on um, language literacy and writing. And I just want, one of the things I wanted to point out that I used to do with my kids all the time on that slide is for kids to start recognizing and identifying print at this age. It's something they can do and a way to build their reading confidence. We're in our cars these days. Um, well, we're in our cars or in our homes a lot these days. So as you're passing um, buildings, restaurants, stores, ask your kids, what does that sign say? What does that sign say? And they're gonna recognize um, so many of these logos and these signs on restaurants and um, stores that they're gonna start, that they're gonna answer you. Oh, Home Depot, oh, you, you can read Home Depot. And it's really building their confidence. And um, that's one thing I used to do with my kids and I wanted to pass that on to you. As you can tell, this guide has so many great ideas that you can do with your kiddos. Um, I just wanted to highlight a few and really show you what's in here because I don't know if you're like me, but when I get a bag, a lot of times I just kind of toss it and I don't want you to toss this with the holidays coming up. Unfortunately, we may all may start hearing, I'm bored. I don't know what to do. We'll just pull this out and flip it open and there may be some new activities to try with your kids. So thank you. Thank you for participating in this engaging bag activity. Like I said, I hope you'll refer to it for fun ideas and activities to do with your kids. Um, and now we're going to get this uh, session started with Kate. So thanks again. Thanks, Kimberly. So tonight's session is all about building your child's vocabulary. First, it's important to remember the key components. Um, we want to do two important things, reading with our kids and having conversations. Reading with our kids daily, even for just a minute or two, exposes our children to more words, words they wouldn't hear on a regular basis. Reading gives us an opportunity to move beyond the common words and expressions to the higher level vocabulary. So in the same way, having conversations with our kids asking questions, uh, making comments, taking turns listening. That's the other key component of vocabulary building. So when you share your thoughts, your ideas, your, um, your feelings, your experiences, your children are exposed to even more vocabulary. So the first thing to remember, the two key components here, we have reading and conversations. So tonight, I wanna to share with you three strategies that you can keep in mind as you are reading and having those conversations, talking with your child. And the books in your bag will help support these three strategies, but if you don't have a bag or you have other favorite books, use those, that is totally fine. And these strategies can apply to any books you might be reading to your kids. So let's go ahead and get started with our first strategy. Um, our first strategy tonight is to label, label everything, everything on the page. Um, let's look at our, one of our books from the bag. This one, uh, you'll see it, you'll see it there on the, the slide. It's called Taking a Walk. Okay, this is a book that is a perfect example of labeling. Almost every item on the page is given a name. So when you're reading and talking with your child, name everything. Name the objects, name the concepts, the actions on the page, everything you could possibly think of. That's 
that you can use to label. So let's look at an example here. I'm gonna open up to the page there on the slide and it's the shopping page if you wanna follow along. It's maybe four or five pages in and on the right hand side there is a um, movie theater and on the left hand side is your shopping. Now I chose this one because I know even though we are staying home a lot these days, we're all still shopping in some sense or another, whether it's online or going into the store. And it's something kids sometimes like to be a part of. So um, for my kids, uh, this can be kind of a fun page. So I want you to take a look and see what you might notice first or what you think your child might notice first on the page that they would point out and label. So if you can pop any ideas into the chat, um, we'd love to hear what your child might notice first on the shopping page. And um, I'm gonna give you a moment. And Jackie, are we seeing anything in the chat? Yes, there is already a few for candy, several for clothing, um, tools has made the list, flowers has made the list. I know um, my, my nephew Henry would go straight to the candy and the tools probably. <laughs> um, ooh, there are a few for dentist, um, candy and paint. So it's such a, a wide variety, probably based on what uh, your child's interests are. Perfect. And thank you guys for um, replying there in the chat. And that's exactly the idea. Let your child take the lead. Um, encourage them to point to the actual words on the page. Um, use your hands, point them out, and go with what they're interested in first. We want to get them excited about looking at words on the page. So um, anything. I have a six-year-old son, and he would absolutely first go to tools and candy. <laughs> so it's interesting, those are the first ones um, in the chat there. Um, so make sure when you are reading that you point to the words, label them, go with your child's interest and give everything a name. So um, you can also do this in conversations as well. Label things you're talking about, point. And really, um, I know we have a lot of different age ranges here in the group. But when your child um, is able to, you can even ask them to use their own hand and find the one you read. So there's lots of different ways you can do this based on your child's age or wherever they feel comfortable starting. I also wanna point out in this book that if you have um, children in the dual language program, um, this is a great example of how things are done in the dual language classroom with English being written in uh, blue and Spanish being written in red or pink. This is actually just like they do it in the classroom. So if you um, are a bilingual family or you want to be, um, this is a great example using two different colors and labeling that way. Okay, let's keep going tonight. So next I wanna move on to our second strategy. Our second strategy tonight is to describe. So I want you to take a moment and pull out the book, The Three Little Pigs. Now I know a lot of us may have read this um, back in the day. It's a classic, maybe um, an old favorite. So this book is full of detailed pictures mm -hmm. and uh, things to describe. We have characters and scenarios of all different kinds here to describe. So we've got the pigs, the wolf, the houses made of straw, sticks, and bricks, um, and lots of different feelings here in this book. So it's a great example to remind you of describing. Now, when you're describing, um, you want to think about your five senses. Uh, we want to think about what we might see or look at, um, what we hear, what we smell, taste, or feel and use words to describe those senses. So <clears throat> in this case, I want us to take a look at the page there on the slide. This is our Three Little Pigs. It's, it's on page five, if you have a moment to flip there, but it's on the screen as well. Page five, you've got the picture of the Three Little Pigs. And this is a fun part of the book because it's the first time they see the wolf in, in the forest back there. 
So that's why I picked this page to point out to you guys. There's all kinds of things to describe. So I want you to think about what would your child maybe go to first to describe or what would you enjoy describing? And go ahead and tell us in the chat where you might start, where your child might start describing something on this page. And thanks everybody for participating. <laughs> Wolf is already a popular one, Kate. Um, I yes. think my nephew would go straight to the wolf too. There's so much to say about the wolf. Um, also trees, um, the pigs look scared. Um, the three little pigs see the wolf and a rabbit. Mm -hmm. The bunny is gray. So just so much to describe in terms of color, in terms of feelings. Um, so. That sounds great. Thanks, you guys, for popping in your ideas there. Um, we love to hear what you might think, what your kids might think. So um, I agree. This is a, a, a page where the wolf is the big, <laughs> the big thing that most kids will notice first. So if you have a pre-K or, or even um, any age, a lot, of, a lot of times the first thing they'll go to is the colors. Um, they love different colors and pointing out. So we might start there um, here at my house and say, um, you know, the pigs are pink, the wolf is gray. So start wherever your child is comfortable and knows some vocabulary already, and then let's move um, just a little bit further from there. So I love the comments about the um, expressions on their faces and their feelings. Those may be things that we can add in to help build vocabulary, nervous, worried, anxious, words like this. Um, we can also point out that the different actions, right? Um, the pigs are standing and the bunny is hopping. So use as many words as you can when you're reading through. Okay, and, and also I, I wanted to point out, I forgot, um, don't worry about using all five senses if it doesn't apply. So just use what you can to expand where they're starting at, okay? Um, let's move on to our next strategy, strategy number three. Okay, and in this strategy, we're talking about comparing. We want to compare, um, and what do we mean by compare? Well, basically just pointing out things that are the same and different. Um, nothing more complicated or, or um, yeah, advanced than that. Just saying what's the same, what's different. So the third book in your, in your bag is a great example of com comparing, making comparisons. This book is how, how do you hug a porcupine? And just from the get-go, from the very beginning, it's fun to talk about how the porcupine looks and how he's spiky and what it might feel like to hug him. So that's a fun place to start with kids this age. Um, okay, so on this book, I want you to start at the back. I think it's the second to last page and we have it there on the slide. As an example, we have all the animals on the field. Um, and looking specifically at the page on the, the right hand side is on the slide. So we picked this one as an example because there's so many different things on the page that you can compare. So in here we want to point out anything that's the same or that's different. So take a minute, what might your kid, your child notice? What would you notice? Any ideas here? What do you think? Go ahead and, and pop any ideas you might have. What's something you can compare on this page? We already have some activity in the chat, some great suggestions like all the farm animals, noting, yes. noticing the sizes of the animal, um, the giraffe is the tallest, so um, it reminds me of this book I read to my kids when um, they were young, Big, Bigger, Biggest. Um, yes. Girls and boys, um, mm -hmm. there are lots of animals. Um, parents are saying some are running. Mm -hmm. The porcupine and the hedgehog, that's a good one that I did not <laughs> notice before. The dolphin rider. So um, this chat is really taking off and speeding up. So I just wanted to give it a, a yeah. quick examples, 
some quick examples of um, what people are pointing out in terms of comparisons. Thank you, family. Yes, and thank you everyone for those suggestions. Um, sometimes it takes just um, another parent, another family's idea to get your, your mind jogging in a different direction. So thank you all for participating. Um, I know that my, my children might start first with colors here again. Um, uh, we've got black and white animals that have the same color. Um, so I think that might be where my son starts, but um, I love that idea of farm animals because I know that's something they're actually, they do every year in kindergarten in science. So I know that might be a popular one too. That's great. Um, so all we want to do is expand what, what they might start with. So if your child starts with colors, let's also point out um, farm animals or um, land animals and, and sea animals, right? We have different things we can look at and compare. Um, so that is our third strategy to compare. Now to review, our three strategies are to label, describe, and compare. So don't worry about doing all three every time you're reading or talking, right? Some of us are um, overachievers <laughs> want to get it all in. <laughs> but um, make sure you go with your child's interest and their attention span. So don't worry about hitting all three at the same time. Fit them in when you can and rotate them. Try a new one. Uh, try some new vocabulary to describe or to compare. Um, but this is an, an intentional way that we can focus on building vocabulary. Okay, so now for the fun part. Jyoti is going to lead us in an activity to practice those three strategies. So I'm going to give it to you, Jyoti. Thank you, Kate. Right, this is the fun bit, as Kate said. So we want you to grab your journals from your swag bag, parents, and a writing utensil. So whether it's a pen, a pencil, or even grab the crayon that's from your swag bag as well. Open it up and I really want you to have a go. So you've been listening, so you've used your ears. Now let's use our hands. Let's put it in reference to the five senses, I guess. So I want you to have a go at drawing a flower. Um, on the next slide, as you'll see in just a moment, we are going to draw a flower. We're gonna try and label, describe and compare. So you can copy this one, that's great. So I want you to start off with just draw the flower for me and give it a go with labeling it. So just write down what it is and the different parts of the flower. And this isn't a test, so I'm not gonna be asking for answers. Um, we're really just trying to help you to use this strategy, do it yourself, and then you can help your children do it at home. So I'm just gonna give you a couple of seconds to draw the flower, say what the, label it as a flower, and then write down the parts. Oh, I see why they have adult coloring books. I actually pulled out a crayon and I'm following along with you. And I see why they like say drawing for adults reduces stress because I don't know the last time I've held a crayon in my hands. <laughs> well, that, that apparently there's some research out there. I haven't seen it myself, but I'm sure there is that it's quite therapeutic. I, I see that. I, I, I would agree after pulling these crayons out tonight. So what we have here on the next slide, um, and again, I'm not testing you. So we've, we've started with actually writing down the flower, right? We've named it. And then we're moving on to labeling the different parts. So we have petals, we have the stem, we have the leaf, and we also have car carpels, carpels. I say carpels, you might say carpels, which is basically the yellow orange part in the middle. And I'm just gonna say it like it is. I didn't know what that was called. I called it the yellow orange part in the middle. So, hey, I learned something. We're all learning together, right? We're building adult vocabulary this evening as well, folks. We are, <laughs> we are indeed. So you, you've achieved the first stage, parents. You have labeled the flower, well done. And I just wanna say, parents out there, if you've got your child there with you, allow them to do it alongside you. I really want you to have a go as the adults though. Um, practice makes perfect, right? So have a go yourselves. <laughs> now, I want you to have a go at describing. So Kate spoke about the five senses. So we've got what it looks like, what it tastes like, what it smells like, what it feels like, and what it may sound like. So using the hearing sense. Now, not all of these will apply, but I just want you to have a go at describing the flower. I'll just give you a couple of senses, a couple of moments. Don't you put 
And I used to do um, with my kiddos when I was talking to them or wanting to get more information from them was I would actually point, like I would point to my nose to get them to tell me what something smelled like or point to my ear, ear, what that might sound like, point to my eye. So that's just a little tip that just came to mind um, that I used to do with my kids when I was trying to get, get them to describe something a little bit more, give me more information instead of always saying, tell me, because they get tired of hearing our voices and I just would start pointing at things and then they would start talking. I like that, Kimberly, I really do. And just remember parents, this is what the teachers teach your children at school. Like when they're trying to ask your children to expand their vocabulary or become creative, they really look in and tap into the five senses to help them expand what they know. So instead of um, keeping it simple, like what we've got on the next slide, we have a couple of examples. So what do you see? What do you look for? You can see petals. Let's expand that so you can see white petals, you can see long petals, short petals, petals of different sizes, you know. Um, what can you taste? Well, there's no taste. And we had a discussion about this as a team, like, you know, if you're, if you're fine dining and you go to a Michelin star restaurant, you may get a couple of pretty little flowers on your plate. But um, for the purpose of this exercise, we don't eat flowers, children, okay? So don't try that at home. And let's look at smelling, right? So what does this flower smell like? So they could smell sweet, fresh, floral, or have different fragrances. So we really wanna tap into what it could smell like. And if you've been really, really adventurous, I know we have a couple of um, overachievers in this group tonight, and you've drawn, say, um, a strawberry plant. I don't really know how to draw one of those, but you may do. You know, you can really explore the scent further and it can smell fruity or something like that you know so what can a flower feel like let's explore that a little bit more so we've got soft very smooth one of my favorites is it could feel velvety you know when you touch the petal it could be quite velvety if any of you have uh, drawn a rose you might have some prickly thorns on there so you can put the you can explore a little bit more of what those thorns might feel like um, and we have sound so flowers don't talk to us as much as we like to we could, I mean, we can talk to them, apparently it's supposed to help them grow, right? So um, right. not all the senses will apply um, in one object or a item. So I want you to have a go now at comparing. So what, we'll, what we will do is that I want you to draw a tree, like a very basic tree. So if we, there we go, perfect time interval. So if we <laughs> have a tree on one side and draw a very basic flower, you've got the flower there, now draw your tree. And I want you to have a go at comparing. So what are the similarities and differences? So Kate's spoken about, um, look for things that are similar and look for things that might be different. I'll just give you a couple of seconds to do that. <laughs> and again, this isn't a test. Okay, so if you look on the next slide, we've got a few examples here for you. So one of the things, oh, I see someone's put sizes different in colors could be similar. I like that, that's awesome, Nick mm -hmm. and Alani. So what we have, you, you can talk about the environment. So one of the similarities could be that flowers and trees both grow outside, okay? They're, they're in their own environment outside. And um, one of the differences could be that actually flowers can come in and be used, come into the home and be used as decoration. And as um, Nicola and Lani have said, the sizes is a, difference a big difference actually you know you've got flowers that are very small I mean I know you have sunflowers that can grow very tall but trees are huge um, and they take a long time to get to that size but that is a big difference and one of the other similarities and differences could be the smell of them so um, flowers have a specific smell whereas trees don't give much of a fragrance um, but if you have a fruit tree then that will give a different um, scent as well and one of the other things that we can look at in terms of similarities and differences are the types. So we know one of the similarities could be that there are hundreds and thousands of different types of flowers and there are hundreds and thousands of different types of trees. So that's a similarity. But that in itself could also be a difference. So there are so many different types of trees. So within that family of trees, there are lots of differences. And within that family of flowers, there are so many differences too. So we, I'm going to honour everyone's time because I know we're a little bit, um, we're still going on, we're still, we're still practising. 
But um, I really hope that you found this activity useful. We wanted you to have a go. So that way you can sit down with your children at home and do it. Um, one of the things I would encourage you to do is to get them to draw something that they want to draw. So it could be a ball or a, I don't know, it could be a flower, you never know. It could be a house, it could be a car, but something which they want to draw because that way they'll be invested in it. And they won't be saying, well, I don't want to do this. So, you know, give it a go um, with them. And remember, as Kate was saying, it's not just about writing it down and doing it in a book. You can have these conversations with them also. So if you're going for a walk, compare, label and describe houses. If you see two houses next to each other, um, look at the sizes. One could be a one story, a two story. You could even, now people have got their holiday decorations up, you can even look at the similarities and differences of decorations. Not to say one is better than the other, but even <laughs> uh, the similarities. Oh, this one's got lots of red flashing lights and this one's got lots of red flashing lights too. Oh, this one's got a Santa, this one hasn't. You know, things like that. Just um, be creative and use your imagination. So we really hope that you found this helpful this evening and I am gonna pass you back to Jackie. Thank you for our families. Thank you, Jyoti. Thanks for all the examples you gave us and for making this so interactive. And a big thanks to our families. Thank you for participating. Um, we really appreciate you doing this interactive activity with us and we hope you feel empowered. So we've kept you a little bit past 7.30, but before we let you go, we would love if you could fill out that short survey. Kimberly just put the link for that survey into the chat. And if you could just click on that link and answer three quick things for us, we'd really appreciate it. Um, we basically would love your feedback because these sessions are for you and we just want to hear from you and get your feedback. So you'll find that link in the survey in the chat box. And as usual, the time has completely flown by in the blink of an eye. So Kimberly, can you just close us out quickly, please? I would be happy to. Folks, thank you so much for being with us this evening for our Family Connection series. Label, describe, compare. That's what we wanted you to get from tonight. Those three things that you can start doing with your kids when you're reading, talking to them anytime. Label, describe, and compare.